closer. So again, for uh, today's uh, dive, no, no, uh, we are at uh, a rift okay. uh, zone uh, just north of uh, uh, St. Rogatin. Um, we're going to be uh, diving uh, to a depth of about 2,168 meters. That's the target uh, deepest part of the dive. Uh, we are just outside the um, boundary of the Papahanaumokuakea Marine That's National Monument that. in an area where uh, we have never uh, dove before. So it's absolutely zoom, new exploration. We're looking at uh, places that no one has looked before. And uh, yeah, we really appreciate everyone's participation and, and tuning in and, and, and joining us and yeah, seeing these first images of this feature uh, just as we see them. And again, we're diving uh, just outside uh, the Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. Um, down. Now, uh, understanding what's inside and what's uh, just outside the monument uh, is, inter is uh, important for managing the area. Uh, so we're not just interested in characterizing uh, everything that's inside the monument, but also how the resources within the monument are connected uh, outside. So uh, we are doing uh, quite a few studies uh, tagging uh, animals, uh, talking about uh, large pelagics, uh, to look at the movement, uh, to try to understand whether animals that reside in the waters of the monument uh, move outside and could be potentially subject uh, to fishing or other um, threats outside um, and also uh, looking at other things where you can put actual tags on them but uh, with genetics so could collecting samples uh, both inside and outside to try to understand how different populations are um, c connected now unfortunately uh, at the depths where we're diving uh, we're not um, able to collect as we'll many samples as we would need yeah. uh, to do genetics uh, so these video imageries what? and trying to understand what's outside and, and how that might differ or be similar to what's inside um, is important for managing uh, uh, this area. Um, and also uh, looking at other things where you can put actual tags on them, but uh, with genetics, so collecting samples uh, both inside and outside to try to understand how different populations are um, connected. Now unfortunately uh, at the depths where we're diving uh, we're not um, right able to, to collect as we'll many samples as we would need yeah. uh, to do genetics uh, so these video imageries what? and trying to understand what's outside and, and how that might differ or be similar to what's inside um, is important for managing uh, uh, this area. Motor insulation's been dropping. And the very neat thing about uh, this particular expedition is that it is the very, very yes, first time uh, that the Okeanos Explorer is sampling, uh, collecting samples. Uh, so we did on the last two dives, uh, in fact, collect uh, a few rock samples as well as some coral samples. Um, and this is uh, very interesting because uh, it allows the scientists to do a lot more uh, than just try to do uh, guesswork of what it is we're seeing uh, with corals and sponges in particular uh, a lot of time you actually need the sample in hand to be able to out. ID it and, and be able to, uh, to identify what species it is and this is because a lot of these organisms are, are very plastic uh, you could have the same organism looking uh, very different depending on the environment they're in and conversely, if you have different organisms all being in the same environment, they might start looking very similar. And as a result, we really need the sample uh, to look at microscopic features of the sample as well as uh, its DNA, uh, which really helps us uh, get a, a positive identification. So all the samples that will be collected uh, on this expedition will end up in repositories where they can be accessed uh, by scientists uh, from all over the world. 
Uh, so it is an, a very collaborative effort, not just with scientists falling from shore, uh, pings, people uh, being pings on calling in altitude. particular times. Um, and then, of course, all the samples uh, when we return to, uh, to shore being deposited in, in, in places Nothing where they can be accessed um, by scientists all over the world. So I'll come down a little bit, back up. Roger that, I'm still coming down. Gauging auto head. So it's interesting. It looks like um, holding at 35 we may meters. have a repeat of Off the uh, first dive here in the sense that we dropped onto a fairly barren substrate. And uh, hopefully as we go up slope, uh, we'll start to see more animals. Um, I'd like to ask the uh, geologists that are online right now, um, there look like there's potentially a fair number of rocks here that could work uh, as a rock sample. So as we get closer, if you could let us know if this would be a, a good place to sample for you. Have you in fish eye? And tight. Delta's 13. All right, when you feel like you have enough uh, tether. Roger that. Around. Coming around. Auto head, head set to well, We have reached the bottom. Uh, depth here is 2,151 meters. Serious 20 meters. Just uh, another uh, minute or so here. Sure. Uh, watch lead it, and we'll be all set up. Sure. Um, could we get a close up of this very sort of dark, rubbly stuff directly below the vehicle uh, whenever you're ready? Absolutely. Sure. Thank you. So, um, so we have a question like about current. Um, I was just well. curious. Uh, it looks pretty still to me. Is that your impression, pilot? Or a navigator, excuse me. Well, I am off stick right now. So all the motion we're feeling is from uh, any current. Which Working is nothing. <laughs> am I correct, or are we feeling any motion? Not much. Maybe a little bit port to starboard. Port to starboard? Okay. Yeah. Which would make that so south, south, south to north. Yeah, bridge, south to yeah. north. <laughs> um, yeah, that's right, because the vehicle is looking, uh, looks like it's due west right now, or not, almost due west. All right, so we want to look at this. Uh yeah, let's take a quick peek and see if we can see what this kind of, uh, what the bottom looks like here. Uh, John Smith is describing this as uh, talus and I guess conglomerate. In video, I've got to remember like what my acronyms section are here. Center of the screen. Is, as a should know these better. Uh, I believe.
module uh, bed right here, if I'm not mistaken. And and if uh, Dima, Diva is still uh, on the line and on the chat room, maybe she could confirm. But it certainly looks like uh, manganese nodules here. Yeah, so there we go. Max, sir. How's our light looking video? I won't be able to tell until I pull back out. Roger that. I am back down to zero gain on this shot. So um, we're not going to um, get into the whole story of manganese nodules uh, here today, but uh, they're quite important right now. They're achieving quite a lot can of news image the uh, just the because spot they uh, can contain some very valuable uh, minerals. Nodules. And uh, there are some countries that are very we'll interested in perhaps trying video. to uh, harvest some of these uh, manganese nodules and um, acquire metals such as copper and cobalt and some other things so it's pretty fascinating to uh, find a nodule bed at this depth they're normally associated uh, with the abyssal seafloor at 4,000 5,000 meters and we're we're seeing this at around uh, 2,000 meters let me check it here uh, it could be further out further out yeah I tilted them in put them back out yeah yeah, uh, there's a request to uh, put the lasers on. So there they are. And maybe we could zoom a little bit uh, where the lasers are so uh, some of the folks can get an idea of how big these nodules are. Come on in, video. And, and uh, there's also a request to see if uh, any of these nodules are loose. Yeah, keep the uh, lasers in frame, video. They are loose. I'm oh, sorry. I can put my toe down and. Uh, so just kind of eyeballing it. These look like they're about uh, uh, anywhere from maybe three to six or seven uh, centimeters. Uh, the laser dots are about ten centimeters apart. And um, Diva Moan has suggested that it looks like it's a nodule platform that has now um, glued itself together. So, but clearly, uh, in the upper There's part of the screen, you can see some loose ones sitting on the sediment. Pretty high so up. perhaps it's mixed, um, conglomerated, in and uh, mixed loose here. Set down a bit here, so if I back up, you should be able to see if I knock anything loose. But it doesn't look Do you want me like to pull out head. wide now, pilot? Sure. Yeah, these look pretty solid. Looks pretty solid, is that right? I'm not seeing any uh, okay. evidence of where I sat down. Oh, I see. Okay, so um, the pilot just informed us that it looks like it's quite solid. Um, he can't even see where he sat down. If they were loose, um, you would have seen skid marks in the sand. He would have pushed them aside, made some trails. Are in fact, manganese coated rotoliths that get you to come uh, he believes that, that they have collected uh, such things elsewhere in this area. There is also a we'll small get there coral soon to the right. It's also a stick coral. Otherwise, you're going to keep pulling. Yeah. The so, for uh, those screen. of you who are unfamiliar with the term rotolith, it's a uh, calcareous algae uh, that actually uh, forms uh, these balls. Serious. And, Look at uh, two in shallower zero. water in approximately uh, 40 to 80 meters Altitude of water, I believe. Um, you can find them on uh, flat areas on the tops of banks, sort of in the mesophotic zone. And there is a beautiful crinoid. If we could get an image of that, that's hyacrinus, mm -hmm. I believe, or a hyacrinid. But anyway, the the rotoliths, I, uh, I'll get back to what I was mentioning, the um, rotoliths uh, can form these very dense beds. And if once the, once the particular bank sinks low enough, um, 
these rotalists could certainly start accumulating the manganese um, um, precipitate or the, the manganese and, and all of the, the coating all over them so they superficially appear to be nodules. Yeah, and in fact, uh, the bank that is uh, close to us, uh, St. Rogatine Bank, that uh, gets the shallows to only two meters, has extensive areas down to 100 meters. Uh, there have been some wide. dives down in that area, and uh, that bank is, in fact, uh, mostly covered with algae and rotoliths. Uh, so that is an interesting observation by uh, uh, Dr. John Bite Smith. There's another one you can rotate right that looks a little closer, a coral. Come around if you'd like me to. But. Well, look at this. We're getting a few animals showing up here um, on the boulders. So a boulder of that size is presumably giving these uh, corals a little bit of a... a more stable uh, place to to land and attach and support themselves. Now, can you uh, do me a favor and measure our distance? And so Nicole vehicles? Morgan uh, also yeah. agrees that uh, that uh, crinoid, that soft crinoid, is in the it family of Hyocrinidae. Right yeah. Yeah. Okay. Come on in, please. Uh, well, they're jumping around a lot, too. Sure, so, sure. Uh, that, now it's 30 there's no tissue on that first one. Yeah. yeah. Now it's back to no, understood that it's jumping around a lot. It's something that may be a dead stock. They but uh, did seem to the ones in the back definitely have tissues. Closer right, and to each other. I think these are going to be isidids in the back the, that's hiding. Yeah, and Scott agrees with you. Come in tight with you. All right, Scott. We're going to test one. your uh, test your ability here, so you don't get to see the base this time. <laughs> um, and he was also asking whether there's a, a sponge in front. Um. <laughs> so perhaps, as we zoom out, we can see both the base of these uh, corals and the sponge. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we're not going to see the base. Oh, it's, yeah. it's behind the boulder. Um, Starting to move yeah, towards you. Yeah, I'm not seeing the Probably. sponge unless he's referring to these uh, unbranched Starting elongate to things, to the whip on the left. Um, Pilot, could we look at that uh, small anemone? Um, Losing you for a second, uh, pilot. Roger. Maxim. Boy, it, uh, it it could be. Uh, what do you? They are nice fitted stocks, so okay. he, uh, that's what he knows. Maybe a pan up just a little bit on the stock to the right. That one there. What is going on there? Trying to see. what that is. Plenty of tether now. To um, get so to uh, Scott has confirmed this is uh, a sponge in his opinion, and I would tend to agree with that. I think we're seeing spicules. And I actually believe this could be a very important um, specimen to collect. Uh, we've never seen anything like this before here. Okay, can we stop the ship now? You bet. Okay. Bridge nap. Out on yeah. video, please. And we got something else the over there. You see the little one. Um, Thank you. We've mm. got a couple of very, very unusual things. And, and Scott's uh, said, I, I put words in his mouth. He didn't say confirmed. He basically uh, is guessing. But I've got a. Um, make a, a little quick decision here because there's a little short one in the back uh, of the two longer ones too that look quite unusual as well. But I, I 
think maybe one of the longer ones would be uh, uh, possibly a good. And uh, Scott thinks it could possibly be a, a clatterized, and and that's why I think it would be uh, important to collect these. And it's sort of the group that I was also thinking, if it is indeed a sponge, it would be uh, within this group. And I certainly know that the uh, the YNC Research Laboratory records uh, do not include any clatterizeds uh, in Hawaii at the moment. And uh, I don't know if anyone else is aware of any uh, uh, documentation of this uh, of this group here. So is this something uh, you want to sample? Uh, yes, please. Okay. I think we should it. also get it closer because they haven't yet determined which one they wanted. Those three here, uh, the, the spicules and the groove included in the in the piece you take. Go bridge. Okay, thank understood, you. sir. Are you going to come forward? Okay, understood. Hold position as best you can, but come ahead as you need. Nav, drop a ta target here, and pilot, let's get out. Right, you guys heard it. Pulling up. Pulling up. I'm going to turn to the west. Yep, you turn west, 270. Now, if you can have the ship come underway. Copy, they're coming ahead at 0.2 knots, gentlemen. Yes, sir. Can probably increase that speed actually. Pulling up. So watch lead, this is Nav. Yeah, I don't hear you through the headset, but um, the ship has Bring lost my its uh, DP system for the moment, and so we are As coming you can ahead. Comfortably push out. We're going to mark this push position out. and come back to it. Roger. Okay. Thank you very much. So um, for those of you who are watching and wondering what's Good. going on. Uh, Looks like we're about to Campus collect the, the sponge, and now we're not. Um, there's a, a small Elon. issue with the, sh the ship right now. Exo and oscillated the bridge. Exo and oscillated the bridge. And, and uh, so the ship is pulling off a little bit. Uh, it seems to be an issue with the bow thruster, so they're pulling off eye, a little bit just good. to make sure we're um, the vehicle is safe because we're fairly close to a steep wall. And then as uh, they correct the problem, the then uh, we uh, may try to go back to that site. Yeah, that looks like we lost the dynamic yep. positioning, uh, but we have marked a spot uh, to return to it. Coming up faster. Okay, guys. Push out um, as you can. The ship is going east, and the bottom drops off dramatically to the east, so you are at a safe depth. Keep coming up. Coming up. Pushing ahead. So um, right now uh, what they're doing is just making sure contact, um, all of the equipment is safe yep. uh, while they correct the problem here. So they're it's so the typical type of response to a situation like this where you get it out into clear water and then correct the problem to make sure uh, nothing uh, runs into the bottom. Yeah, so we just pulled off the bottom. We're just about 50 meters above it. Uh, Have you on tail cam? But again, we did mark the spot uh, to return to Auto head out. when everything is uh, under control. Bridges and have you talking to me? Okay, understood. Winch coming to stop. Um, we'll let the vehicle settle out and then I'll direct so you back Randy, to So Randy, it looks like you may wind up getting your uh, midwater transect after all on this dive. I mean, we gotta we gotta make uh, lemonade out of lemons here, right? Okay, guys, DP is back online, Let's and stay uh, here for a little once while. we settle out, yeah, we'll start to move the ship back. That's We're not moving anywhere.
open mic bridge. Open mic bridge. Yep. So if you just uh, joined us, uh, there was uh, yeah, I think so, we're just at 2,100 meters. The, the bottom is about 50 meters below us. Uh, there was a problem with the ship's positioning system. Uh, so we just pulled off the bottom uh, to get the ROV clear. Um, yeah, you can see by the movement of, of particles there in the water column, there was very, very, very slight uh, current of any. Okay. Ship's holding position again. Before we do anything. Okay. Okay, so um, for those of you watching the uh, second feed, uh, you're okay. looking at the pilot's screen, and you're looking at essentially um, top left, you have a compass okay. showing the heading the, of uh, the ROV, which right now is about 305 degrees. So it's facing to the northwest. And over on the right upper corner, you have the position of the Bridge Sirius uh, vehicle that's above the ROV at the moment. Yeah, and like it's an facing at uh, around 135 what degrees. It's a and so it's facing toward the southeast at the moment. We might expect again. And you can also see uh, depth information over on the lower right corner. And you clearly see uh, that we're at 2,093 uh, meters. And the altitude looks like we're 33 meters off the bottom. And the okay, Sirius, um, uh, we're just going to go over to the right hand side. That was the altitude and depth uh, of the ROV. Picture. On the right hand side, you see the depth of Sirius, which is 2,091. So Did it's fairly close to the same depth as the ROV. <laughs> and uh, it's a little further away uh, from. It. Yeah, and we've got. Got the uh, altitude of Sirius at around 48 meters. And if you look at the uh, graphics below um, the depth and altitude for Sirius, um, you can see some red arrows there, and that's showing you the positions of the cameras. So you have sort of a side view, and you have an overhead view of the vehicle. And then on the left side, um, it's a little more complicated display, I think. Um, yeah, okay, so the, those are thruster indicators on the very bottom left. And uh, some of the information on the center areas are uh, electrical components, um, uh, so the pilot can monitor uh, uh, electrical conditions of the vehicle. And so, of course, uh, the screen is very, very informative to him. He can see pretty much everything that's going on. Yeah, but the ROVs themselves are, are far, uh, fascinating uh, from an engineering uh, point of view. Uh, the Deep Discoverer uh, has a depth rating of uh, 6,000 meters. Um, uh, and it is uh, just weighs in at about uh, 9,000 pounds, just a little bit That's over the it. Same thing. Uh, yeah, uh, ten and a half five, feet I expect by it to be in the eight and a half feet, so about the size the of a small vehicle. Today. And Same it carries nine uh, video cameras, two of which are high definition, we don't uh, and have two manipulator arms uh, to be one able to brush, collect samples. Brush test motor, which doesn't seem to be making a difference. So one Delaney thing you'll notice um, is that we're not recovering the vehicle right now. We've just got it at 50 meters, and we're just waiting um, and, uh, of course, hoping that...
that the, the engineers on board the ship can fix the uh, problem with the uh, the dynamic positioning system uh, quickly, and then uh, yeah. if they so su they succeed, we'll screw up in the potting. Yeah. we will um, uh, descend to the bottom again yeah. very quickly and be on our way. So our uh, supreme uh, mapping person Mimi Lobecker has just uh, joined us. And we have a bit of an issue, uh, Mimi, in that the uh, bow thruster or the some aspect of the dynamic positioning system has failed on the ship. Just, you'd also so have to get oil in there somehow. So we are hovering at 50 yeah. meters off the bottom, waiting to see if they can fix it. And we'll drop back down again uh, once they do. So we're poised for action when we're uh, when the ship's ready. We are poised. And this is. This is why we maybe didn't want to be down at the bottom of a, the base of a cliff. Uh, this is the uh, absolute perfect <laughs> reason. But um, chance would have it that we have very, very mild currents today, almost no current at all. Oh, that's and good. So that's, I think, I mean, why so he's. I think he's waiting uh, because of that reason. No. So okay, we can bridge, safely hover 50 I'll meters off the bottom. That. Yes, you can just sort of see in the HD display how very still okay. uh, so all, of, all of the uh, ship is stable. All of the particles in the water are. And it appears that you moved off to the northwest. I was, uh, I did have forward way. So I was tugging on Sirius a little bit. How much did the ship move? Do we know? I don't know the answer okay. to that. Well, we can acquire bottom and try to... Uh, well, we need to pull off the wall. Yeah. I had that same thought, but we should pull off here, then reacquire, rather than try and go back down slope. Okay, so I in mean, that case... We get, where did we go on bottom? Oh, okay, here's, back there. Yeah, here's where we came on bottom, yeah. which is 45 meters away. And here's where the sample was, and that's 37 meters away from Sirius. Mm -hmm. So I could have the ship move to try and center Sirius over the sample. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like a great idea. See how that goes. All right. Yeah. All right. Stand by. So, um, pilot, depending on uh, how long this takes, uh, we may bail on the collection, and we'll just wait and see uh, what what the time looks like. <laughs> what was that, watch? Um, so, depending on how long it takes them to fix the, fix the problem, we may decide to just go ahead and uh, move on rather than try to reacquire the boulder and, and collect that sample. I copy that. Um, Nav, did you copy? No, no, Watch I did lead. not. Okay. Watch lead. This is co-pilot. Roger, co-pilot. Go ahead. So this, the update here, the bridge has solved the problem. We have thruster control. We've been given permission to reacquire bottom. Uh, unfortunately, during that um, little issue there, we moved about 30 meters uphill uh, of the boulder, um, which means bridge, we, we don't want to acquire bottom and then try to back down the okay, hill. I got the ship moved for you. So we three five meters. We were just starting a thirty One, meter four, five, move degrees. downhill to Zero place Sirius right nine. on top of the boulder. Um, that'll take uh, ten fifteen minutes to complete this evolution. That's correct. Thank you. Um, I'm thinking, why don't we just go ahead and start moving up slope? Um, with any luck, we'll see some more of these animals. Upslope, and this is a fairly uh, barren area. Even though we have a species of interest, I'm, I'm thinking that we'll also see some other things. And with a two collection limit, um, again, uh, I'm not sure we'll be able to find move. a couple things uh, worthy of sampling. Rod to that watch lead. We will cancel that move and uh, acquire bottom. Great, Bridge thank now. you. Yeah, I've been asked to cancel so um, for our listeners out there that weren't copying all of that conversation, uh, the problem has been solved. Uh, and what we're going to do is instead of trying to refine that boulder again and those sponges, uh, because we drifted a bit up okay, slope, go we're actually going to go ahead and um, reacquire the bottom and then continue on our way and skip that collection. So good and and uh, perhaps now. we'll see another one of no, these. Uh, further along in the dive. Skip that simple. But um, very shortly, we are okay. going to resume the dive. In fact, we're descending right now, I think. 
And so uh, thank you all for your patience for hanging in there. And I'm very delighted that it was a quick fix. So as you can see, uh, the bottom is again in sight. Uh, we are 2,120 meters, uh, just hovering slightly above uh, the bottom. Yeah, you should be able to uh already making my turn. Pilot and co-pilot. The next watch is wondering whether you want to stay in the seats for an extra half hour or want to bail at the scheduled 15 minutes from now. Sure. I mean, I don't want to speak. To so that. the problem has been solved. We're back on the bottom at 21 and... 150 meters. Um, we see this uh, big field of talus, pillow fragments. There's a coral ahead of us and a couple of corals actually uh, just in front of the remotely operated vehicle. All right, watch lead, we're pretty set up here. Um, if there's anything you want to look at, we can look at that, and then we can uh, also start the uh, ship move. Sure, uh, why don't we take one? I can't hear you, watch lead. Oh. Yeah, sure, why don't we go ahead and look at this uh, possible branch call over there. Let's send it to school. Copy. And, um, right here video I'm sorry say that again pilot we're yeah we're a little hot sorry setting up the steel camera and uh, yeah we're seeing the uh, the isidid that was hidden behind it That's so we might be able to look at the base And you can actually see the stock crinoid off to the right of that boulder. So we were very, very close. And so it's certainly worth uh, trying to grab that unusual it's sponge, nice I think. Such a distinctive uh, piece of geology. So you can see that stock crinoid over there as well. It's another good landmark. Looking good, pilot. Thank you. 
Radio partial on Sirius, please. Hold there, please. Actually. Something is um, very up with the So, video, could we uh, zoom that small um, sponge, the third one between the two longer ones in the on the left side of that boulder, just to get a closer look at that one? Could you copy that request? Yeah, of science. Okay. yeah I'm coming around. Okay. You got rocks to your left, so you won't yeah. get much lateral. You can see the stock cry crinoid in your port rail. Copy that science. Uh, pilots move in that direction. Roger, thank you. I wonder if because you're right-handed you might want to come in from the other side. I don't know. Yeah, it looks like there's a few pull out a little bit, Bobby. Yeah, let's come out possible we get cup calls on video. this. Uh, Older, but yeah, we'll need to zoom to determine what they are on the side as well as on the front face of that full wide. boulder. Thank you. Max, yes, so um, I think. I think I'd like to go for that small one, if, if that's possible, pilot. Uh, this one we're looking at right now. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be a little more challenging. Harrison, once we get this, I'd like to pull focus to the near field one. This is a comparison recording. Um, so Scott France uh, thinks this is a collateralized two. Holding focus. And I won't say confirmed. I'll say he thinks it is. Um, just like I th think it could be as well. I was actually just reviewing uh, collateralizeds on my iPad here, and uh, we've got. Uh, I assume it's maybe a smaller version of the taller ones. Securing hydrox. Hydrox secured. Swing arms upper swing arms up. Outer sw lower there swing arms go. still out. Pointing forward. Okay. Clear it up. Are you guys ready for a ship move? I think yes. we're ready to pass over to our guys and for a ship move. And we have control back. Thank you. Hey, watch Lee. We're going to uh, swap pilots here. Uh, Roger that. Uh, so we're just doing a, a quick change of uh, pilots. It's close to lunchtime here in the ship. Uh, so we're uh, changing uh, the pilot team out. Uh, but for those of you who just joined us, uh, we are uh, diving on a rift zone. Uh, north of St. Rogatine uh, Bank. This is an enormous feature, 150 kilometers in length by 40 kilometers in width. Uh, we landed at a depth of uh, 2,150 meters um, and are now, we collected a, a pretty valuable sponge sample from what it looked like, um, a particular group of sponges that had not been recorded from the Hawaiian archipelago before, so we are very excited to have secured the sample. Um, as we're doing our change of the piloting team right now, um, you can see uh, behind us what we just left uh, was a field of uh, pretty loosely um, loose uh, nodules of uh, manganese, about two to six centimeters in diameter. 
um, and we could confirm that they are loose, uh, just that the thrusters moved quite a bit of these. Uh, and ahead of us is a field of, of yeah, bigger so rocks, and, and that, that same the site that we uh, see the, we don't, the slope don't picking up. Yeah, if we can get a zoom in on that sponge. Sure, I'll get a little closer and sit down. Looks like yeah, you're okay. free to zoom video. Zooming in. Tilt down with me. Good. Red put the laser. Excellent, thank you. And going macro. So a beautiful image here of this uh, particular sponge. And uh, Chris might uh, have an idea of what this uh, sponge is. Um, so now I have one thing that uh, can happen since the wind is pushing us in the same direction as our travel. Uh, I don't know if you learned about controls. In school, for sure. We're kind of and it's to uh, it's going to be a polyopagon, I'm quite certain, as well. And again, the going. key character mm -hmm. there is how it's attaching to the substrate. how far we get. Okay. Um, so um, you call 30 uh, the ferritomatids tend to, there. they have a lot of different forms, uh, but uh, there's a lot of these uh, globular forms, and they okay. all have the these uh, specialized spicules yeah. so with little hooks on the end to grab a hold of the rocks. So okay. unlike the sponges that cement their bases to the rock, uh, this guy sort of grapple yeah. hooks uh, the rocks to hang on. Make sure that they do stop at 30. Oh, yeah. So basically, every move you monitor, okay. keep measuring, checking. Yeah, all right. This video of the science appears to be very tiny organisms moving around. Yes, I can see what you're talking about. There's some little uh, white ones in there. And maybe copepods. Hi, guys, they're yeah. copepods. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Mary. <laughs> just a just a note, watch lead. Uh, okay, I good. Got the shot with the lasers. That's on a rock. That's not necessarily in full wide pilot. Thanks, Carl. Right, I can see you're on the on, on the substrate behind the sponge itself. It's a little right. There's the actual sponge. Yeah, so it's a little over 10, 10 centimeters, may, maybe in length. White ones in there. And maybe copepods. Hi guys, they're yeah. copepods. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thanks, Mary. <laughs> just a just a note, watch lead. Uh, okay, I I'm good. Got the shot with the lasers. That's on a rock. That's not necessarily in the full wide that. pilot. Thanks, Carl. Right, I can see you're on the on, on the substrate behind the sponge itself. It's a little right. There's the actual sponge. Yeah, so it's a little over ten. 10 centimeters, may, maybe in length. Video, you have to. Yeah, for We're the good. general Thank audience, uh, sponges are some of the, are the simplest form of animals. Uh, they don't have any tissue layers. Um, they have spongy material or pretty porous material for water flowing in. Uh, about 9,000 species of sponges described, but many, many yet to be described. So a pretty rich group of organisms. So our current depth is 2,145 meters. Okay, video. Let's start going in. I'll just head slowly back to the right. Okay, here we go. Oh, I was wrong. Right, 
it's partial here. So I, uh, I suspect that uh, Amy's and others are going to chime in and uh, probably describe this as a corallium. Uh, that's what it looks like to me. What are you looking at? You read, you read my mind? The other possibility would be a Paragorgia. Oh, is that port swing arm pretty and low? And we do... Yeah, it is pretty uh, low. Yeah, we've got uh, Scott thinking it's a Paragorgia, and Amy uh, thinks it's hard to say, so I would agree. It's a little bit confusing. Paragorgia and Corallium are fairly closely related. I was just trying to see how close I got. Pilot, can you tilt the camera up ever so slightly? A little more. So Scott's actually uh, thinking it could be Corallium now after a better look. And looks like Amy thinks it's possibly a Crowlium as well. Which so, do I uh, want to be? That I guess uh, that makes three of us. I see some bumps on the actual branches that uh, could indicate it is a Crowlium. There are certain species of That's these deeper ones that actually the have base. these little uh, no, uh, knobby protrusions on the main branches. I think the base is behind it there. You want the the bottom, the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Okay, hold that. Okay. That looks pretty good. Zoom in a little bit. I want to get the laser first. Scott's trying to cover up the fact that he guessed uh, Paragorgia first, but I'm not going to let him off the hook. Uh, of course, I haven't uh, guessed wrong on anything, have I? That's no. Never. Never. So yeah, Corallium uh, uh, belongs to a group that's commonly known as uh, the pink uh, corals. Uh, so these stopped. are like uh, harvested one? in some places of the uh, world no, to ma manufacture precious uh, coral jewelry. Okay. Looks and in Hawaii, we had a, a fishery wide. for these organisms okay. uh, you, that is currently yes. uh, dormant. Watch, watch, lead. Are you good with that coral? Uh, yes, we are. Thank you. So you'd like to head up to the one on the upper right of the screen. Yeah, let's take a, a peek at this one. It looks similar and superficially yeah, that we collected. I'll just try floating here. Yeah, maybe that would be worth uh, at least confirming whether it's a Chrysogorgia. And if it is, um, it certainly looks like the same one we collected yesterday. Okay. Go for Zoom video. Yeah. Can you in. zoom in on it? Yeah, they're trying. Also like a pr primnoid at the bottom there. Okay, um, so this does look like a Chrysogorgia, and it looks like it could be the same one that we did collect. Macro. Yeah, I agree. This looks like a Chrysogorgia polyps. And Scott, would you agree it's the same one that we collected maybe yesterday? Yeah, and this is actually a better view because now we can see that it's not really pinnate. The branches really are coming off on one side, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And so, and um, pilot, also um, we have a request to image uh, coral that's before we leave here. That's slightly down to the left uh, okay. on the boulder just uh, in front of this one. Uh, so. Looks to me like it's a uh, possible Norella with the polyps facing downward. And I don't full. know what um, everyone else thinks of this thing, but I would probably, my guess would be Norella. Yeah, it's a, definitely a permanoid, and uh, yeah, the, with the polyps facing downward. Facing down? Yeah. Yep. That's it. Okay. Yeah, and uh, Amy also agrees that she thinks the polyps are facing down. And, and keep drifting to the starboard like you are. So we're getting Sorry. some more details about the polyps, and um, they're and discussing the um, the number of polyps in the whorls and seeing if a, uh, a tighter ID comes from this discussion. We're watching the chat room intently right now. Going full wide. Nice job, Carl. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. And 
And uh, do we think it's an Arella? Is that what everybody? The upper ones? Yes. Can I put in a ship uh, move? Yeah, of we can have 30 meters. Right. Or if it's if you feel it's just not at point because two of the terrain. <laughs> and, <then laughs> and Amy goes, Woo But it'll be a little better for me. Okay. Yeah, the upper swing arms out? Yeah, the upper swing arms yeah, out as well. <laughs> Thanks. I'll tweak them. We'll try those out, and then if it gets too steep and rugged, we'll put them back in. Ship move is put in. Thanks, Nav. So it's quite a uh, sort of a boulder field here, a boulder slope that we're looking at right now. A lot of stuff has slid down slope. So I have my camera up, so maybe you can... See if you can light what's ahead of me. Sure uh, Mike work. and uh, and uh, John, um, I know that the uh, the carbonate terraces uh, off of the Gardner Pinnacle, the the bank Gardner Bank, if you will, um, they can actually extend down to 2,000 meters, and we are coming up slope to a uh, fairly flat area, which. Um, do you have an opinion whether uh, that terrace that we're heading up on could be uh, carbonate? And if so, um, would any of these boulders be carbonate? Or are we looking at uh, basalt right here? Uh, what's the depth of the top of the wall? If you zoom out and find the contours. I don't know. Do we have any uh, comments from the geologists? What type of rocks some... Um, we're looking at here. That causes glare, definitely. Uh, John yeah, just we'll says that it looks like out. typical <laughs> volcanic <laughs> talus. Too far. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just put it here. Um, so yeah. Scott there has reported go. that the video is, like that. is yeah, gone. Well, you can where he is. A little bit to the forward. Yeah, I think they're, I'll try again. Ben. Same uh, as a down. for Andrew. Down. I One cannot see the video anymore, so we just cut out. All the way forward. All the way forward, yeah. Yeah, sorry, Mike. The labels online. When they're swung out, down is up, up is down. When they're swung in, <laughs> yeah, it's the right way. So. Enough to make it crazy. Ah, uh, you remember. Yeah. It's not too bad. Yeah, uh, it's evening out. Uh, Pilot, did you want the bottom of the cl cliff? Uh, top. Top. Looks like 2,000. So oh, crap. The coal just dropped. <sighs> yeah. It's not 2,000, that's right. So if, here. if things went wrong, we would have to fall up to above 2,000. Yeah. That's kind of cool. It looks like we just okay. lost the conference line there. Yes, watch Stop leads. Rising. I'm, I'm going to try to reestablish. Okay, thank you. I'd set my winch to match your rising to be consistent. And then I looked over and I'd gotten ahead of you. It's okay. So one difference I've seen in the Hawaiian Islands compared to the East Coast is if the terrain says a cliff. Well, I won't speak until we're actually there, but it, it's not as sheer. It's, it's pillowy. On the East Coast, it would be 50 meters of flat, 150 straight up, and they right. would average to this, but here it actually just seems to be... Uh, well, it's a, it's a lava flow. Yeah, right? it's lava instead of... So unless there's a fault in the lava flow, you're not going to get that same. Yeah, so it's interesting. Safety-wise, uh, it's kind of nice. I won't comment fully till we're at the top, but it's kind of nice. It's also less interesting. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So that that would get a lot better if you just touch down a little on the Zeus too. I don't know if you want it up that high or. Yeah, I was playing. Well, I had it up before to see if we could light further. Got a flare. Yeah. So we had a little bit of difficulties with the video feeds in the conference line, but yeah, we're trying to get it back right now. Yeah, I think this is... Go way up. Up this particular uh, wall here, uh, the top of it is around uh, 2,000 meters. Uh, but we are on a... Very good now. On a rift zone that has never been dove on before. And so these are the very first images of this feature. What do we call it? 30? A uh, very yep. large feature, I should might add. might not have even started yet. Yeah. Well, you're out there. So we yeah, so this is definitely an anthemastus. 
tilted up for me. Yeah, I'm still flying. I just okay. want to see. Yeah, you, it's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. You're. If you come wide a little, I'll just sit down here. Okay. Now okay. we're good. Tilt up. All right. Oop. That should work. Actually, tilt down. Sorry. Yeah. Hold there that. We go. Tilting down a touch. Yeah. Okay. Hold that. Get the whole thing. And going back row. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. It's all thanks to Copilot's lighting. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, beautiful image of this uh, Anthemastus, uh, commonly known as uh, mushroom coral. Yeah, full wide. Uh, they are an entirely um, different which, group of octocorals. Uh, on the screens. They do not have, yes. uh, their yes. skeleton yes. is very Service different uh, than that of Gorgonians. Uh, uh, all so the other uh, corals we've now, seen. Right below that. Yeah. And yep. it yep. looks like there's uh, one mm -hmm. of these uh, the long-legged shrimps there the to to our right. Or aft, or aft, you know, from the back. Yeah, we've uh, seen shrimps. quite a few, yeah. Okay. Another one Any interest? That's written on the checklist, too. So positive, positive would bring the vehicle off the port quarter. Well, you're definitely moving co-pilot. I'll uh, continue uphill. So yeah, we're continuing to move up on this wall. So we're approaching uh, the rift zone from the east towards the west. You can see that the current is very, very uh, mild in this area. And the densities of animals is, is uh, quite barren, actually. So we're going to try to, the, the, the goal of today's dive is to make ourselves to the top of this wall and then see if we see a higher density of animals on top of the feature. Uh, but this is all new, unexplored terrain. No one has ever uh, dove or imaged this feature before. And in fact, uh, the Albatross, uh, this oceanographic research vessel that spent some time in Hawaii in the early 1900s, spent about five months in Hawaii in 1902, including several months up here in the northwestern Hawaiian Islands. They collected a bunch of samples with deep sea trawls, but nothing in this vicinity. So uh, this entire area has never been imaged, uh, sampled, or surveyed. So yeah, this is Actually, it was. exactly what the Okeanos there. Explorer is about, exploring unchartered territories. What happened to our mood light? Oh. Okay. If you can follow it. Yeah. Working on it. Here. He's not going very fast yet. Yeah, very slow. So these are, you can see about 10 semi. Uh, so it looks like an outfitted small one, uh, just under, just about 10 centimeters long. All right, let him swim into the frame. Yeah. I've got to slow myself down. I'm a, lot, <laughs> a lot bigger than him. Yes, you are. <laughs> nice shot there. Thank you. Very there nice. You very nice. Nice shot there. Thank you. How are we doing on our move? 
Looks like we just stopped. How are we doing on our move? Looks like we just stopped. Sorry about that, Lydia. It's all right. There he is. Yep. Come on up. Yep. Kind of cute. And let him go. There he goes. And he's gone. Okay. Okay. Now we can set her up. Good. Hold that. Okay. Uh, stable again. Stable. Hold that right there. Partial. And back row. So it looks like we're getting a, a close up of a crinoid here, an unstuck crinoid. Crinoid. Keep the drift. Stop the drift. And now I see that uh, all of the fish people had stepped out of the room when that uh, fish appeared, and that's that's Murphy's law. Perfect example of Murphy's law. So. And I see that Randy Singer isn't uh, yeah, on the line down, anymore. Yeah. I think he was going to drive home, so he missed it as well. So uh, five more I'm seconds. sure all the uh, okay. coral experts thoroughly enjoyed the fish. Me. So if they started their move away, looks like it. gonna hang out right here. Okay. Until uh, we get in a more comfortable situation. I can drop down a little more for you. Ready pilot? Uh just getting set up here. Stand by. It's like a uh anemone. I think it's actually a little uh, hard coral. Okay, you can start going in video. Yes, it is. It looks like it's a little uh, sclerotinian or hard to coral. Move away now, now. Uh, co pilot. Mollusk there on the bottom. Oh, yeah, yeah right wait. at the bottom. Thanks. Yeah, a couple of minutes. We're staying at 15 anyway. We're staying at I'm staying. Uh, the 10 meter ready. move is complete. Thanks. Okay. I'll lower down as we back up. So, how should we handle this rock request? The one you got yesterday, did you use the shilling or the skid or what? Uh, so, I. We were going to use the shelling, mm -hmm. and then it was looking very loose, and there was actually a boulder in the way of the shelling. So we just kind of closed the jaw, poked at poked it, it. Okay. and it moved right away. But there isn't one that jumps out, so we could try with the shelling first yeah. if you want. Watch or leader, are you happy with that, Sue? Rather. Yeah, I think they're going to zoom in on it. Definitely moving away now. Still dropping. Yes, um, video, can we um, zoom in on that red crab like thing? Uh, on your uh, mark, pilot. Yeah. <laughs> Watch that I was just setting up. Sure, yeah. I just set down. <coughs> okay, video, you're free to zoom. Copy that. Uh, it is a picnogonid. Look at that. It sure is. It's probably one called Colosendi because it's colossal. What is it? Colosendi? Colosendi? Could you could you spell it, Mary? Ah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, 
I wonder if the little white dots are part of him or if they're little associates. I don't know. I was looking at those two. Uh, maybe when Mary comes back uh, with a name, she can uh, tell us a little more. Okay, you want to try for a close up? It, of okay, it's C O L O S S E N D. Okay. They look like little shells. E I S. E I S. Colosendis. Okay. Great. Did you um? You able to, oh, there she. Diva uh, put it in great. Uh, Mary, do you know what those white things are on it? Uh, Mary, do you know what those white things are on it? It's not part of the pentagon. There's something settled on him. Mm. It's not part of the pentagon. There's something settled on him. Is this some kind of parasite or? Yeah, I guess a parasite or a commensal living on it. It's Pilot not really harming it. Just shifted need, about needed five a towards the wall. Um, would you like me to check with Bridge and readjust? Uh, oh, there's even an overhang. So we you might notice that it's very slowly time. moving, and that's probably about as fast as that animal can crawl. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's very graceful, though. He may be slow, but he's graceful. So what do you what do you think, guys? Are any of these um, just taking a look? Boy, I don't know. Yeah, it looks totally cemented. Yes, it does. Oh yeah, you're right. Copilot was an optical illusion. So, um, what do you want to do here? Um, I try to grab some, or just try to see if we can find some looser stuff somewhere else. Yeah, I think we should move on. Okay. All right. Sorry, Mike, but it's looking pretty solid to everybody. Well, as I said, Chris, this area has turned out to be very interesting despite not having rocks. Oh. Video? <laughs> you get full light on Sirius, please. Yeah. That you can pick up, that is. Full light. So what do, what do you think is uh, going on here? We were, we're we're trying to uh, prod some of you guys to give a little more commentary on the geology here, because because um, there isn't much biology. Yeah. Coming up. Yeah, I'm just gonna back up first to get an overview. Well, if you note the rocks, they have a different kind of jointing than some of the ones we've seen on the previous dives. So I think we're looking at fragments of dikes that have. Uh, pronounced jointing, uh, parallel jointing, that are breaking off from the rift zone that's so prominent on this volcano. <laughs> well, that's interesting. I hadn't noticed that at all. And I noticed there was a difference, but... Slide over to the center of your screen. A different kind of jointing than some of the ones we've seen on the previous dives. So I think we're looking at fragments of dikes that have... Uh, pronounced jointing, uh, parallel jointing, that are breaking off from the rift zone that's so prominent on this volcano. <laughs> well, that's interesting. I hadn't noticed that at all. And I noticed there was a difference, but... Slide over to the center of your screen. Okay. Well, that first big boulder was particularly uh, representative of a dike. Ah, okay. Yeah, it had a pretty square shape, didn't it? So as you go up the wall, you're looking at uh, pillow cross-sections. You can see more rounded surfaces, uh, and that's diagnostic of pillows that are being um, eroded as the cliff collapses. Huh. 
Looks like another one of those Coralliums, maybe on the lower uh, part of the screen, but hard yeah. to see from this distance. Uh, oh, and is there a Ritagorgia? Yeah, Ritagorgia. And we've got a Chrysogorgia geniculata, probably, or at least Chrysogorgia species. I'm going to turn a little to starboard to look along the wall. And we've got a Primnoid over there on the left. Just point it out. And Lasers. To the one we left behind, we ended up not collecting. Yeah. So, uh, except I don't think this is uh, right, I don't I think, think this is a cladorhiza. This could be a type of Walteria. To the left. And we got a Corallium uh, okay. behind it. Try a macro here. I'll try to keep it in the center. If, yeah. If we could get it, yeah, close up of the stem. Yeah, so. Um, Current depth here is 2,082 yes. meters. Yeah, I'll just work my way up now. Is that full zoom? Yeah, and I agree, Amy. Um, it almost oh, does yeah. look like an antipatherian. I was yeah. I was studying that. That's why I was so quiet there. Mm, yeah, we'll have to I'm look not, from the other. Yeah. I'm not so positive this is a, um, yeah, it's a, a sponge at all. And uh, Nicole thinks it's a coral mm -hmm. as well. Uh, I don't know if Scott's weighed in. Uh, yeah, yeah, he thinks it's, it's an anapatherian as well. Yeah, now you can see the polyps there, and you can see the, how long it's, so that would put it in the Schizopathidae. Uh, yeah. So for a long time, people thought that this family of black corals, that they had polyps with just two tentacles. You can see how they're, like, divided very... Uh, well, is this a collectible or not? Yes, that is definitely something like we have never seen before in Hawaiian waters. Um, is that a possibility, uh, Pilot, at this location? To, or is this going to be really difficult? Uh, I'll have to talk it over with uh, co-pilot. Maybe Dave Wright, if he's listening, has some ideas. We'll See. have to find a place to uh, get the vehicle stable. Yeah, I would, I would try getting your toe on this nose. See if that. Something like we have never seen before in Hawaiian waters. Um, is that a possibility, uh, pilot, at this location? To, or is this going to be really difficult? Uh, I'll have to talk it over with a uh, co pilot. Maybe Dave Wright, if he's listening, has some ideas. We'll See. have to find a place to uh, get the vehicle stable. Yeah, I would, I would try getting your toe on this nose, see if that gets you. Well, I, I certainly haven't seen this thing before, and sure if you, you haven't, post up with your and Scott there, doesn't recognize it, uh, yep. I think we have a possible keeper here. Yeah, I would agree. Scott's suggesting the closest is Piranopathy. Yeah, bring the swim in. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to watch out for the uh, shilling also. It's over there. Just, uh, yeah, we can uh, be okay, but we can bring it in if it's um, close to the envelope. And uh, so, yeah, we got definitely a, a sort of a dead yeah. isitted sock down there, and this yeah. looks like a. Could be a, a Weber eye or, or possibly a Caratoisis, the one that looks like it's got whorls. All right. We're just setting up here to collect this uh, mysterious uh, antipatherian or black coral. We're at a depth of 2,128 meters. 
Um, from the view we had earlier, yeah, I agree with Scott that the closest is the Paranthopathus, but this only has a single row of pinnules, uh, not multiples like what we saw yesterday. Uh, definitely the family Schizopathidae, which is the dominant family at these Better depths. Worse. Uh, worse. That's uh, good. It's okay. So you think that's a good length? Don't want to get too much. So this oh, uh, family of black corals oh, is nice very thing. elongate okay. polyps. Maybe. Uh, almost looks like a polyp is divided into three different uh, yeah, segments. Low enough on it. And for a long time. Some people thought that uh, this group of corals had your wrist, polyps maybe? with two tentacles turn it right. because they're so elongated. Right. Turn your joint right a little. There you go, that direction. Now you're more square. Nice. Great. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so which box are we going to put this in? We'll to get away hey, before we leave here, is that actually branched down below there, or is that a second colony that's just behind it? Okay. It seems like halfway yeah. along. I think it, left, it looks like it's a branch. Yeah, I think that's actually something growing on it, but we'll get a zoom of it before we leave, Scott. So we can't box out Thanks, now. Daniel. So that's we are, okay. Extend. No, I don't think that we can box out. I'm just getting ready. But we also... Oh, we actually have bottom lock. We can go into auto. We'll five meters up. It's okay. Just back off and let yourself rise. I'll keep an eye on the camera. Okay. Are we going to put this in the starboard bio box, I assume? Yeah, why not the starboard inner? Starboard inner bio box. Uh, yeah. Roger. Yeah, thank you. Okay, back off. Gonna switch yeah, for a second. That looks like yeah, a Norella, so uh, possibly a Norella Bowers eye the to the, uh, just went off screen on the upper right. Okay, side right, just a touch. Oh, so that was not a dead eye suited. In fact, that was a. Um, uh, a very healthy live one, fairly large, leggy one. Right. Looking good. Get you your minisies back, unless you're still flying by this. Got uh, an nope. anemone, and I think it's a hormetheid anemone that's uh, facing down right in the lower center of the screen. And there's uh, Ritagorgia. He's got all types of barnacles, it looks like, right on the very top of them. All right, keep an eye on me. See if auto XY will hold. Okay. Oh, uh, no, we're dropping out of DVO. It is, unless it's the uh, five arm variety. Let's uh, zoom in quick there, Roland. See if we can get a and it definitely is not, I don't think. And okay, let's see I don't know what we're looking at. Um, I'm hoping that Chris is maybe uh, paying attention right Thank now you. and can uh, potentially uh, come up with something on this guy. He's got, appears to have spines all over his back. Do we want to linger for a closer look? We should at least uh, get a one quality image. We want to linger for a closer look here. Um, can you do a sort of one more fast zoom on it? Yeah, let Just me get in a little closer here. And we'll yeah. And we got a beautiful isidid over there on the right, and it's like there's another different variety of isidid uh, next to the sea star. So, 
Yeah, I don't know what that is. I don't think it's an asinactus. It looks like there's a very tiny little bamboo recruit, just a couple of inches high on the uh, right, to the right foreground there of the uh, asteroid. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that's drifting pretty far back. Yeah. Yeah, he's just a young one, just starting out. So it's it's possible that's a type of astinactus. Uh, they do have protrusions off of the their back, but um, it's my my head uh, or, or the examples that I have in my head of astinactus. Uh, these protrusions are typically clear. Um, but um, perhaps Chris will be calling in in a bit and helping us out with this one. Let's come wide for a minute, Roland. Let me in the uh, meantime, I just want to say uh, the interesting thing about seeing that uh, very young Isidid is that, you know, we keep talking about how old a lot of these colonies are. So it's nice to see that there's more recent recruitment um, ongoing in this area. Yeah, and I, I think probably a lot of the small um, uh, young colonies are often overlooked because they're a little bit harder to see. We tend to immediately be drawn to the larger, more spectacular, older colonies. Absolutely. And the comment was made before by uh, one of the geologists that um, we were starting to see biology when we got to look in close to the rock. Uh, so a lot of the time we're passing over the really noise. small stuff. So I'm sure there's all kinds of material here that we don't often get an opportunity to look at. Yeah, I completely agree. That's not a very good line up there. Hang on. So we could um, uh, we could take a quick look at the small one and then maybe uh, move on upslope a little bit. Uh, this okay, pink. Rolling. This uh, pink I sitted is, I think, something that we uh, collected back in, in 2007 in to the right. off of okay. uh, Twin Banks, if I remember correctly. And I'm looking right now f to find out what the last sort of generic name was for it because it was unknown at the time. Your position so good. Uh, it'd be cool to have a, another shot of the sea star. Okay. Let's uh, macro this. Uh, yep, that's that good was with it. That. Huh? Yeah. Okay. See it very well though. You can see the bulbous, the backside of it. Okay. Go to the sea star. Okay. One last video of that. Oh, I'm not uh, seeing a picture of that pink one in here. I think maybe it was um, not a very good uh, in situ shot that we got of it. Maybe look at the yeah, leading so that's, feet at the top. Uh, that's nice shot. And look at the bottom.
And one full frame two shot. That's good. Hold her there. Clear pulling out line. All right, so how about uh, let's make some tracks here. We certainly got a good image of that sea star. So we, we do Ship need to reach the crest to today. And um, uh, we don't haven't made it that far up here. Yeah, we're uh, we don't haven't made it that far up here. Yeah, we're about a, a third of the way up. Yeah. Our current depth uh, here is uh, uh, yes, 270. 2,085 meters. Uh, the top Not is about much. 1,900 meters. Bring your uh, starting to slope away, so I'll bring your upper lights point them forward a bit more. I'm gonna point the yeah, we are still only one third of the way up on this rolling. cliff. And so we uh, we definitely want to get up to the crest. So And based on our calculations we're about like halfway into a dive. Yeah. So we should uh, yeah, try to cover some ground if we lights, can. Uh, yeah. forward a bit more. Uh, we've got a sponge that looks like it's a sacro calyx. Would you like another move, co-pilot? As we're moving by? Yes. Going to repeat the last 15 meters. Note the jointing here. Bridge, are we now? The interior of a dike. Right. Yes, can we please repeat our last move? That was 15 meters at yeah, 270, okay, one tenth. I'm gonna uh, let us come around. Good copy, thank side. you, Bridge. Way above you. Okay, rolling. Big sponge. Okay. Don't know what to talk about. I'm going to come left here, uh, Josh. Hopefully, gain a little tether. Roger that. The uh, those yeah. banana cams are really good tow cams. Can we yes. accommodate that? What do they want? Very easy for parking. Brian, you're mic'd up. Yeah, open. Just have to keep an eye on the uh, craft. I'm about as stretched uh, out as I should be over here. There, and you've got more um, Delta's ice only nine it the looks moment. like. And uh, more of this uh, This looks like dike rock. I'll have a look around to you catch up. Going Maybe back down. There's a little discontinuity in the face you can see in the uh, Sirius cam. I'm headed there now. At 270, one tenth. Good copy, thank you.
that help with the lens flare? It's uh, mostly gone except for that one flare. Right on the left, left the there, yeah. Do you still have the camera in the same angle? I'm at uh, essentially horizontal, three degrees. Is that a crinoid or is that a multi-legged sea star there? Oh, up the left. There's a couple of crinoids. There's two of them, one at the top right and one at the middle left here. Uh, snap a zoom on that and see what we got here. Oh. We've seen that fella before. Let's come out. We'll go look at the other one. It's a stalked one while we're waiting for some tether here. Falling star. Oh, for right. Sir, uh, Tina just remarked that that uh, crinoid uh, is prob probably a comatulid uh, crinoid. And. Uh, Yeah, we have two different types of crinoids here. So I, <clears throat> so I just ever so slightly bumped out your starboard lower swing arm. Should still be protected by the the little wing extension. Okay. You'd have to be really up against the side to damage it. Yeah. It's interesting. You see the current. Uh, yeah, and it looks like on the stock of that crinoid, there are quite a few hydroids. Nice. Definitely some hairs coming off of them. Let's zoom in a little bit here, Roland. And yeah. Okay, well, I'm just waiting for some tether. Okay, we can come wide. So this may be similar to the stock crinoid here. that we saw yesterday, uh, which was identified uh, by Chris Ma. He consulted some people and identified it as a bathycrinus. Is the ship moving or is it holding position? It's supposed to be moving, but it's been struggling a little bit. Okay, video is swapping out. Yeah, there's some uh, comment here Bridge, on the chat about uh, collection. So yeah, we did collect uh, two specimens today. Uh, a uh, yeah. very uh, unusual how's it going sponge up there? as well it, as an antithetic black hole. It looks like you're having a tough time uh, but we making your way west. More, so, uh, yeah, feel free. If if you do see something very unusual, uh, we can collect more specimens. Roger that. Um, you can increase that speed to point two if it helps at all. Not sure we've um, uh, seen it at this Bridge, site. Bridge, the snap. Um, and then uh, there's quite interesting. Can I put in a ship move uh, for 20 meters uh, just to at 270 right degrees at 0 0.2 knots? Sort of a yellow tinge to them. Lots of lot of uh, loose rubble here. Thanks. Yep, so that definitely looks like Weber Eye. It looks like they're branching right out of a node right near the base. Yeah, but we definitely have def different species of isidids here in this environment. And maybe an uh, anthemastus there behind it. Yeah, that's, uh, that looks to me like it's anthemastus steenstrupi. Do you want to get a good view of this one, actually? 
Um, I don't think so. I think we've got enough to identify it as okay. the uh, Weber Eye. Okay. Is there anything else? I knew you were talking about a couple yeah. other things. Um, if you turn right a little bit, there was this uh, yellow ice fitted that was looked somewhat different. Uh, we might have already passed it. Oh, I see it on my other camera. I'll get it. Yeah. Okay. It's close by. Yeah, I'd like to uh, get an, uh, another opinion on this one. Yeah, that's the guy right there. Just poking his branches up. Maybe we could get a look at the, uh, the branch points on this thing where it's coming off. Okay, so you'd like a better zoom? Settle in. Yeah. Ready for a zoom, pilot? Stand by just one second. Almost ready. Touchdown. Okay. Come on in. Call for the uh, where the joint is. Yeah, where the joint is. Go and on more video. I'll come down for you. There you go. Go ahead. That looks like it's. Um, it's like it's just epinodal. Looks like it's coming off just above the node, but I'm not really certain. Do you want to try to find another branching? Yeah, maybe move up a little bit. Right there. And, hmm, that's looking I a think bit the touch uh, more branch zoom. point above this one, Chris, it looks like it was internodal. Uh, excuse me, nodal, right there. Does yeah. Know, it looks like that's nodal. That's yes, it does. Uh, uh, that's, yeah, that's why I asked them to move up there. Um, it's kind of a weird nodal, though, isn't it? It's Uh, maybe not. Maybe it's just that there's so much tissue on top of it. Um, maybe we can just go up a little bit further, see if there's another yeah. branch point. Uh, right right there. So does that look uh, nodal to you, Scott? Uh, we've got sparse um, sclerites in the column. You see that? Yeah, you can definitely see the sclerites there. Not on the scenic kind, though. Just on the polyps. Hi, right, guys. I, I don't know if you heard me that we lost the conference line for a moment there. I was saying that this might be uh, Jason Isis. Did you hear that? Uh, no, we didn't hear that at all, Scott. Uh, is, do we have a, a specimen of this particular isidid from Hawaii? Uh, well, it's unclear. This is um, a relatively new genus. It was described a couple of years ago, and um, there's a lot of other species in the clade that have yet to be described. Once you take off, uh, I'm going to so, move you know, the I'm slider back in and pick the uh, shilling up. Well, I guess given uh, move on, then uh, but we got some beautiful um, imagery of where it's branching. Now, uh, Tina has requested to right. see if we can right. get a close-up of that antimastus. Uh, it should be right at the base, and beyond this coral. Yeah, I'm not so sure it was Steen Strupai either. Uh, it looked a little weird to me. Uh, I was thinking it was just a distortion of the angle, but it... Yeah, yeah it should be. Oh, look at that. Oh, and look at that sponge. Uh, I guess that's a sponge. My close watch light? Excuse me? Uh, someone was looking for an anthromastid down here. Right. I, so that no, I, I got I got distracted by these two uh, sponges on the either side of the stalk of the coral. But if you zoom out a little bit, yeah, yeah come on, partial video. Let's see if we can yeah, yeah, Where was that? It was right. Uh, keep keep zooming out. Full wide. Uh, a meter left and uh, half a meter. Uh, up from oh, where the lasers the are. Yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, okay. the, the fuzzy Let me stuff. just make sure I'm going to go for the right thing. Video partial real quick. Yeah, it's, right. it's just to the left of the lasers. Yeah. 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 And I, that's not an anthomastus, right I don't mm -hmm. think. I think okay. it's hydroids overgrowing something. Uh, don't think a coral with the craft. Sorry. Or a zoanthus. there. Why don't we come uh, full wide video? Yep. I'll come around where I can get a better view of that. I still think that's a stolen <laughs> Ribbon-like one growing over a dead sponge. That's my prediction. 
Stolen, uh, yeah, okay. Stoloniferous octocoral growing over a dead sponge, okay. Am I going to lose it behind the rock over here? Video, come on in. I think there was a little hermit, hermit crab at the bottom, too. Well, it's definitely a sponge. It looks like it's uh, part of a feria, feria if, if you will. Bit. And it's definitely being overgrown by something. We've seen this a couple of times yeah. before on this trip, I know. It's yeah, and so um, now that you have a closer soon. view, uh, does that pretty much confirm your uh, your guess, Scott, or or support yeah, it? Yeah, confirm it. It's got uh, pinnulated uh, tentacles on those polyps, so I'd say that is a stolen upper doctoral. Huh. Terrific. And that sponge uh, is still live. The parts that are not overgrown. You can see here is see what you're talking about. This is the live part. Or is that a separate sponge? Uh, good question. You, you're. I think you're right. It, it could be a separate sponge, and it's. It's hard to tell. It looks like if you look, zoom in a little more video. A little more full zoom. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's like they're connected right there. It's hard to tell yeah. if it's on the rock, or. I think the. Land. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Okay. Well, I'm ready. Let just get this. Zoom up, or I'll uh, a couple tilt up here for you. All right, great. And uh, internodal branching or um, branching and unbranched um, forms. Is that correct? When I mean by branching, like maybe two branches or three only. Okay. You're not quite full wide. Yeah, so there's a complete... Yeah, that's uh, correct, Chris. Did you get um, some pretty ones, video? Yes, thank you. Gorgeous. Pilots, can you make another shit move? Um, uh, maybe a little more south this time? Find the, uh, uh, let's unbranched see. Ones mixed with the branch ones in various different I think around 255 should give us a pretty good... Yeah, up yeah. route. 255 is uphill. Yeah, we could do another 20-meter jump ahead. All right, sounds good. Actively working on that problem. Yeah, and, un and unfortunately, the uh, unbranched forms uh, used to be very, very easy. <laughs> we used to call Bridge, them all under one now. genus. And it's now, now a good time to do the uh, more, uh, shilling pilot. Complicated yep. Can I get a ship move of 20 sort of meters at 255 degrees at 0.2 knots? Right, exactly. Um, and, you know, we're spending quite a lot of effort yep, in thanks. trying to work backwards from the genetics and the detailed morphological work to the images and the videos such that we can look at other things and make it a bit easier to identify the video. And um, less than his uh, student, Abby LaPointe, uh, thinks they have now uh, are now able to tell four different kinds of what we used to call lepidisis uh, just from looking at the video. So we're going to test that um, in this next couple of months in the Hawaiian waters. Oh, excellent. That'd be great. Yeah, just knowing what subtle differences to look for would be uh, really, really helpful. Fisher I2 at the white base. Now I have co pilot. And we've got uh, Go ahead, Akinella Akinella I Weberai. do believe we're out of the steep part, so when this ship comes to a stop, yeah, she's going to add yeah. on a 30 meter move and to we this. We've got uh, um, an anemone Roger. up here, which is could be um, could be maybe Sisionis, but I'm not sure. I'm what are we looking at? I can get a little better view. Uh, I think we can go ahead on and pass. Got, got yeah. time. So if it's, it's, if it's unclear, well, I've it's, got a little extra here to grab it. Oh, oh, the yeah. spiral. Yeah, Sorry. the spiral one. Still learning my coral names. 
have to work on those flashcards. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but you didn't know Rita Gorgia right off right off the bat. <laughs> well, you told me you told me the last time, so I should have learned it. But well, I never learned it the first time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, video. Yeah, we can come in from here. I'm just gonna float. Backing up. Down just a touch. They're uh, beautiful animals. I'm going to go a bit further. Go ahead. as good a shot as it could be. I'm sorry. Get it back to where it needs to be. Okay. And I just Try plugged, that. Just just plugged in our position and we did make some headway favor. on the wall. We are let's see if I can figure out what our distance is. Uh, it looks like we're about uh, 130 meters uh, away from the uh, top of the wall. All right, I'm going to come out for a partial. So not too bad, not too far to go. Get the lasers out. There we go. Bridge, this is Nav. See the nice spiral Can I get another there? ship move of 30 meters at 255 degrees at 0 0.2 knots? Thanks. It's a nice shot down it. Pilots, I put another ship move in, uh, same direction at 30 meters. Thank you, Nav. Years ago, and you the just had to port. Uh, it was cut open. I'll start catching up to you. And um, in order to Move identify it, they actually have to look at the uh, mesenteries on these animals. We the did two, a twenty and a thirty sort of back to back, so I'm somewhere in the middle of a fifty meter cavity move. in order okay. to uh, nail down their identity. So they're they're again uh, sort of like those unbranched uh, bamboos. Uh, these anemones are extremely difficult to identify from video. Oh, so yeah, that is, uh, looks like that black coral that we we just passed. There on that one, I could definitely see it has side branches. Yeah. Uh, like that one we collected. Uh, yeah. Did have one little one. That one had two, I think. Yeah, and if that's the case, then that would put in that genus that there are paths. But that's something Tina would like to have a close look at. Is that a little starfish on that coral? Yeah, it looks like it. There's a sea star feeding on the bamboo coral that you're just passing over on the right side. Yeah, why don't we take a look at that sea star over there? And Sure thing. Got lots of time. Um, uh, Chris Ma is really into predation, and he loves to see uh, his animals eating other animals. So sure he'll he'll get a, a thrill of this. Uh, of course, it's at the dismay of all the coral people who prefer the other animals don't eat their corals. But it's tricky with that uh, fluffy one at your port skid. Yeah, I'm gonna have to come over this way and land over here instead. It's okay. Just a little adjustment.
head a little over a little farther. It's a fair amount of little coral here. I don't want to bump, so that's why it's taking a second. Sorry. Sure. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm... Let me hold this and, for a uh, second. You know, the, uh, the, the okay. supposition is that the bare branches uh, just to the upper left of the sea star mm -hmm. are potentially branches that down, he's already fed on. The sea star. Let's zoom in a bit more here. Yeah, it looks like he's the same guy. And what he is is the question. Polyps below him are closed. They're afraid. What's the uh, orange brown thing that is projecting from it up to the uh, right there? Looks like there might uh, be a, like a shrimp. shrimp. Yeah. I think it's a possible shrimp. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Just the mm. tail? The yeah. Yeah, just the, the tail on it. Tail looks a bit like it could be a plesionica. But I'm, I'm not sure. We can't see really the front end. We might be seeing one of the antenna waving there. You could pan up just a touch. We could or you move float from up here, rather. Can you have a look at the lower right? There was a black coral. Um, I can get the shrimp in there a little bit. Uh, yes. Okay. So if we zoom out there and then. Uh, yeah, to our right. I don't suppose you can see the front of them, can you? What What was that, Mary? Is there any chance of getting a top view or a front view of that shrimp? We'll do it. We can. I'll lift up. Oh, there he is. You did nice. get him. Yeah. Coming back a little. Yep. No, I'm sorry. I'm. That's fresh. I'm bringing him into center. I was saying what I was Go doing ahead. so you could track focus. There you go. You can go back in. Yeah, can you ask video to boost the audio? Uh, it's getting very hard to hear. Uh, I think they probably copied that. Yeah, uh, we copied. And that does, and boy, that is one weird shrimp. Looks like he's got very filamentous antenna off of him. All right, time to go, pilot. Okay, sorry. Hope you can grab a snap from that, because I gotta go. Kenny, I guess he might be a baby Palomanella. A baby what, Mary? <laughs> he might be a genus called baby Palomanella that always lives with deep water gorgonians. And things like that. Huh. Well, I'm glad you. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. I have. I have no clue what that is, and I don't. E I'm not even familiar with that group here. Okay. Looking Maybe uh, it's called Basie Pelamanella. Basie Pelamanella. Did I get that right? I can continue exploring. B a t h y p a l a e m o N-E-L-L-A. I uh, got it there. Thank you. So go ahead and pronounce it. Bathy Pelamonella. Bathy Pelamonella. Okay. And one of these Arida Gorgias. And these look like uh, pillows. And uh, Mike, would you concur that we uh, maybe are coming off of the dike structure and getting into more of a pillow area? like a paranthropathus there. Oh, the one like the one we collected earlier. 
It's the same lighter color. Right here? Yeah. yeah. And that looks like an umbrella path he sets just going off screen right now. I don't know if Scott saw it. Uh, Tina yeah. thought it was umbrella path. Yeah, interesting. Oh, there we go. And it's got another one of these uh, Ceremetra uh, crinoids on it, it looks like. Can go on NVIDIA. Just yeah, let's go ahead and zoom in on this. This, would, this is the first time we've seen one of these guys here. Settle down. I've just been just doing this for flying. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking at the chat room to see if you get any feedback. Yeah. So we've got a number of black coral specialists here at the moment. Um, I'm not uh, too familiar with this group. I mean, the species that's described here from Hawaii is Umbilopathus helioantes, but I'm not familiar with the characteristics of that species. We have a request from uh, Amy uh, Baco Taylor if we could zoom uh, on the bushy coral that was above and left of this one. Okay. Right above and left. And, uh, oh, that still here is uh, through the online uh, video feed. Uh, but for those people who just joined us, uh, we're very excited that we uh, collected um, a specimen of a. Uh, uh, Isidid coral, uh, possibly the genus uh, Jason Isis. Um, we're currently at a depth of 1,980 feet uh, meters. Uh, sorry, uh, and you can see the density of animals is, is uh, quite dense here in this area. So uh, we're pausing for a moment. Here there is a uh, crew change out here. And when, uh, when everybody's um, settled, um, it'd be nice if we could do a little bit of a flyby over this colony. I don't know if they're facing in a, in a good direction, but I can certainly see a lot of stuff that's um, off in the distance there. It'd be nice to sort of just yeah, run gotta, right over it. Yeah, and get a view of the, the forests, really. And uh, just remembering the bigger picture of this, uh, that these are dense communities. Uh, and uh, Dan, just what's the general direction of our movement? So, so waypoint two is um, going to be roughly two, five, three. Just for most two, of viewers that might be uh, seeing this from far away. Two, five, three. Uh, especially uh, for those uh, students and, and younger folks. Just showing uh, the importance of some of these communities. Can you you hear have me, dense um, habitats. You yeah. have all kinds of uh, invertebrates associated with these corals and sponges. So the ship is currently stopped. Uh, and uh, just showing how much life there is. Ready to get the ship you know, underway we're toward waypoint two. Right. Over a we're mile just about at the top just, of this uh, below the surface of the water, and, and you can see there's there's sure. forest down here. I think we've got a, a really large sponge in the back too as we cruise along here and get an appreciation. So we're attempting to get an appreciation for the density of the animals here. We're going to do some sort of flying around here in this community, try to get an idea of its size and and uh, composition to a certain extent. 
Uh, that big white uh, sponge in the background is a fairy matted. It's in the genus Polyopagon, and it looks to be a, a fairly common uh, large sponge at these depths. Uh, poly we're calling it Polyopagon species B, and that's sort of an indication that it has a, a scooped out side on the other side, and then sort of a rounded backside. And so right now we're only differentiating them from the number of atrial surfaces, which are sort of the flat convex surface of the sponges. And here we have a beautiful um, Bolosoma, I think, uh, Bolosoma uh, species B. Oops. So um, we've got quite a variety of animals here. Uh, we went over a primnoid colony, uh, unusual sponges. There is a uh, another uh, a Freya a near Oka erecta. That's a sponge that looks like a skeleton in the background there. And still we have a, a lot of uh, the bamboo corals, the isidids, as well. Chris, is this the uh, top of the feature that we were climbing? Yeah, we're uh, just rounding off the top uh, according to the bathymetry that I'm looking at. So uh, we're not quite at the very uh, complete crest, but... Yeah, it uh, looks like, a, like almost like a false peak, so it, it's flattening out a little bit. Yeah, Nav, can you weigh in on that uh, as far as where our position is relative to the uh, crest of the ridge? Yeah, standby. Looks like we're pretty close. The terrain should be leveling off um, over our next move. Uh, we're about 120 meters or so from waypoint two, and uh, it doesn't look like there's much uh, of a peak beyond that. Sure. Okay. Well, then uh, why don't we try to make uh, waypoint two and uh, see how far this uh, group of corals and sponges continues. Uh, probably a paramuricid or a plexorid. It looks looks like something that we've called uh, plexorid gold, but we may be heading in that direction anyway and can take a look. Okay, Dan, whenever you're ready. Yeah, yeah you're uh, starting to tug on me, so I think this is worth so getting a, a close up left. here because it's... I'm going to put in 120 meters uh, toward 265. 265. I think that's our... Uh, uh, point two knots. Okay. I think that's probably our first uh, member of that particular group. I'd like to request a ship move of 120 yeah, meters bearing 265 so at 0 0.2 knots. Thank you. Well, I'm kind of steady. Close enough? Yeah. You know, it's snapping. Oh, my goodness. Partial. It's a paragorgia that's totally overgrown with some type of uh, parazoanthid, I think. Going a little more. And all the way. Yeah. Or it's a corallium that's completely over. Part it, right, huh? What's that? <laughs> Boy, <laughs> how many of us were wrong on that one? <laughs> Perfect. Uh, well, let's got the ophiroid oh. right. Yeah, you got the ophiroid <laughs> right. Yeah, it looks like a corallium, co totally overgrown corallium. Go ahead, please. For the next one, five minutes, well, I was just saying, I got the Atlantic uh, part right. Oh, <laughs> that's right, you did, you did. Nice flying, Jeff. Uh, that, that actually makes uh, that actually makes Scott the winner here. He okay. he got the go to again. Yep. part. Couldn't get very close to it. Yep. Tugging Dave around. Yep. No, it was a uh, plexoid in the log. If it wasn't for that close up, I'll brighten up the screen. This, if you see it off in the distance. Yeah. We'll go past this. Stocky sponge, it's sticking out here. Yeah. Uh, let's say even the Corallium ID that I made is incorrect. He's calling this uh, Paragorgia corolloides, uh, which always has a zoanthid on it, according to Les. So I'm not familiar with that species. Um, has that been recorded from Hawaii before, in your, in, uh, to your knowledge, Les? Looks like a big sponge coming up. And 
And uh, Les has confirmed it was described from the Pacific, at least, by uh, Bayer, one of the uh, one of the founding fathers of deep sea coral biology, a very famous person who worked at the Smithsonian. And uh, his name appears all over the place uh, on on uh, the taxonomic descriptions of many species. Yeah, recently uh, passed away, but a r really prolific. So yeah, these are. This is a good size. If you're going uh, into space, I like to try a little snap zoom on the big sponge. You're just, looking uh, at what we would here. consider probably so, the backside okay. of it, sort of the curved surface. See what it's like for me to set a toe down here. Okay, tilt up. There you Hold go. Hold that. Partial. Oh. And so looking going at all the, the way. laser there. Hey, Chris, it's Nicole. Hello, Nicole. Um, I saw interesting from Noid, uh, to the left of a feria type species, to the left of the ROV. Can we zoom in on that when you're done with this? Uh, sure can. It was just to the left. If he swings uh, the camera left um, from the ROV position where it is right now, we'll see it. Is that correct? Yeah, it should be on top of a rock. Okay. Yeah, we can take a look Thank at you. that. Nicole. You read my Thank mind. You. Sure. Hold that. Really nice. And uh, let's just add it here that I think I just uh, the paragraphs are matter. Avoided. It will tilt yeah. down some more. You can also see uh, can. below the sponge that we have some more down, of these down, uh, if you can. possible collateralized yeah, sponges. Okay. Oh, hold that. Okay, go ahead. Now, if we oops, gonna go take a look at the base here. So you can see the uh, hooks, yeah. the, the hooks yeah. which is characteristic of the family Pheronimatidae. And also I think it's characteristic in general for right, the, going uh, full wide. the I think we have a discophora, which I've is heard the science may be looking now for something to our to the, left to the port. a little bit and um, see if we can take a look at the sponge that Nicole would Two six five. You're full wide on both cameras. This is the the big problem with sites like this is that there's so many things that people are interested in. Uh, you just can't get everything in a single dive. And this is a particularly fascinating uh, site up here on top because it has quite a variety. I'm, I'm not seeing uh, one thing that's um, super dominant in this community like uh, many other of these high Great density swinger. ones. Uh, wow. Yeah, I think I agree with uh, Les that uh, this looks Jason Isis like. So Jason Isis is... Uh, you see the way the branches come off the main axis, they're kind of curved, the sloping curve. Uh, the seeming time is a little bit thicker. Um, and when you get a close look, um, even the polyps look a little bit thick. It's got that sort of a brown tint to the tentacles at the end, and the oh. are fairly few. You don't see any making me work. Which you do in the uh, <laughs> corrado isis and many of the isodella. So, Am I getting so closer, Joe? Yes. Using <laughs> at this level, anyway, to give Try it to that. Avoid that. You're getting That's very close. <laughs> so, are fact, all I'm going to pull out so you can get a better perspective. Uh, oh, there you go. Thank um, you. Trainer, Check your minute like cam. This one is. Uh, that other one looked like it was a little, uh, not quite planar, but this one looks uh, quite planar. Yeah. Or can there be yeah, multiple? Yeah, I'd say um, the multiflabellate is the word they use. So, you know, there could be multiple planes. So not a perfect planar one, but... So. Um, Thanks, Bridge. Stand by. Uh, more like multiple Interesting, planes instead of the current a real course pushing me backwards. But I have right now, there's only yeah. one formal species on. of Jason. Uh -huh. So when we say that, we're that off of you're full wide. I have made and uh, genetic data that we have so, so far. So the ship is stopped, but it's like there's quite a bit of delay. 
okay. what encompasses um, the morphology vehicles, of the uh, Should we just let them settle out before we get another move underway? Uh, uh, no, I can push ahead. Push ahead. If the goal is to keep moving, I can push ahead. Okay. Onward. Onward. Left is also suggested yeah, looking at you 70 degrees. Devices, which, uh, We're out of the really spotlight there. Very much. Um, Feel a little chill. Species from uh, the area of New Caledonia. Uh, but Les has collected a couple of things uh, around Hawaii that he thinks might be in that genus, and they have some characteristics um, in common. Um, again, possibilities here. Sounds good, there, Chris. Um, I'm just uh, while we're still waiting to collect this uh, dive. Uh, for those of you who might have uh, joined us a little bit late, give you a just brief summary of what we've uh, can't reach uh, seen one. so far. Uh, we've been in the water for just under four hours now, so we landed. I don't at, think there's anything here uh, that's not cemented. 2,150 meters. I think you meters. might be right. Uh, there was a flat surface covered with ferromangulus no nodules. Uh, we worked our way up the slope, collected uh, a very unusual push looking and sponge. Go somewhere else. Okay. Uh, Later collected a very interesting uh, black coral, uh, as well as a, a octa coral, uh, as well as a rock. Can you um, follow me with the mini zoo so I can park And it. right now yeah, we're here uh, Actually trying use to your, uh, right uh, collect a rock, but we're having there. a little bit of a, a problem, and it, it looks like the pilot has just informed me that we might uh, be moving uh, just a little off the spot of seeing, uh, to see if we can collect something uh, a bit easier. Our current depth is uh, 2,980, um, that's uh, 70 meters. And we're just uh, about 70 meters from the top of this feature, which uh, flattens out around 1,900 meters. You Almost head west and I will come around the other way and pick you up again. Exploration Command Centers as well as uh, from other places around the world. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so the bearing right is going to take us over the... Uh, let me... So the bearing is going to take us over the flats, is that right? Yes. Hold that. Uh, maybe we ought to uh, move along the ridge crest where it looks That's like it. it's kind of okay. richer hunting grounds. So you'd like to move along this contour line? Uh, yes, oh. please. Down uh, us a little bit. North or south? Hold that. Uh, which way are we facing? Well, the current is the current coming from the south. If I'm, is that correct? Stand by. So, can you either lateral or turn to the port? There you go. Left. A little more. Hold that right there. Yeah, the current tilt down to just a bit. Uh, from the southwest. Tilt down just a little bit. Well, that's interesting. There we it's go. Sort of coming up and over Full the zone. ridge, isn't it? Um, so the easiest direction uh, would be to go along the ridge to the north with the current, or would it be easier to go against it? Hold that. Stand by. I would assume. Um, with the current, but let me check with the pilots here. Okay, standing by. As long as it's not cross current, I think it's all right. It's just in the shadows. Okay, then uh, maybe uh, we can uh, uh, go uh, with okay. the current. Going for a wide. Northeast a little bit. Okay. Let's go explore. And here is a. Uh, Porphyra crinus. Um, so these are. Snap uh, soon, Joe. Maybe yep. we can take a look at this for folks who haven't seen this uh, one. These are really beautiful stock crinoids here in in uh, Hawaii. We right probably there you one go. of our more common stock crinoids. I think this uh, is a first view also of this candelabra. Uh, bamboo coral that is that? just in front of and to the right. You can hold that. Um, so just a quick or as best you can. The um, I think it's a new one for the expedition. Okay, we'll do. And if you can drop the lasers for a pretty picture. Stand by. And Nicole just uh, thinks that this is...
Proisocrinus ruberimus. That's what it is. Uh, excuse me, I misspoke. Um, I said Porphyrocrinus, and that's that's wrong. Uh, I'm looking at the picture right now. Uh, Proisocrinus ruberimus, what jail. I meant to say. Yeah, thank you, uh, Nicole, for the correction. Whoa. Oh, okay. Thanks. Uh, got a lot more particulate Have matter. Got, like, in the, we got more. This water is. Uh, there. Yeah, I was just to get that sort of uh, planar view of it. Just oh, he's way up there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And I think the holothroidian is uh, senolacted. Uh, that's my best guess. Keep coming up. Some, keep rising. I know. Cut. Um, So it looks like it's a nodal brancher. So um, uh, you going to Isadella on this, Scott? Yeah, under the current definition of the genus, this would be Isadella, but um, Les and I have uh, genetic and morphological data to suggest this is a new genus, um, not very closely related to Isadella, actually. Um, but it always starts as a trident, and looking at this colony, it looks like the lowermost part of the left side of the trident is actually broken off. Uh, Les had just made a comment in the event log that this is kind of unusual because it's asymmetric. Mm. Can I get some better uh, images of this, Chris? Um, no, it's got so there, you see where it starts the mm. lowest branch. It's only branching on the right. Normally, right. that would look like a trident. It would come out on both sides. Right. Well, did you guys want to take a close look at that point where the other one would come out, or is that good enough for what would you like to do? I, I think that's good enough. I mean, if you have the time, if we're not going anywhere and you want to look, you can, but um, feel free to move on. Yeah, that looks like what we saw yesterday. And full. Is there any little sub branching there or not? I'm not really seeing it. Yeah, there is, isn't there? There is one on the other front face. I can see something coming off of the front face. See the yeah. extra little branches? Yeah. That looks identical to what we were seeing down in American Samoa. Anyway, you can lateral you just any, a little uh, bit. There you go. Possibly the 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 pad, yeah. Perhaps? yeah, I was going to say that that Thank it you. looks very similar to what we saw yesterday, Scott. Yeah, I think is Tina back? Um, maybe she yeah. has a different opinion. Uh, Tina is back. She's she's saying heteropathies. Uh, the one in oh. the back. Oh, the one in the back. Which? Uh, there's actually oh, there three is. black corals right here. Oh, the heteropathies, the storopathies, and then there's a different one, a thoracopathies like one on the left. Yeah. See the sclerites in it, looking to see if there's needles between the tentacles and how far they extend in the polyp. Uh, some of the images yesterday came out just, or the dive one came out fantastic, where the sclerites were really reflecting the light. So you could uh, get a lot of information from it that way. Okay. Good job. Well, imagine right. if we just zoom right here and then just adjust uh, on their recommendation. He's looking for. We need to go extreme macro on tighter. this. Okay. Um, Hold and what he's that. looking for is the and distance between the the little black nodes. So if we can zoom out just a hair, or after get the polyps now and then zoom out after that. Yeah. Any more? You give me. I'm trying to scooch, but I must be against That's, a rock or something. Yeah. Hold that. come up a bit. That's great. It's really interesting. It looks like the sclerites that I can see appear Hold to that. be Hold horizontal that. with respect to the axis of the That's polyp itself. Better. And uh, I don't actually see... Is that you or is that the current? That's right the current. Now. Wow. Um, but uh, th that's some beautiful imaging, and um, I'll look forward to looking at the uh, downloaded images later. Thank you. Sure. Let's 
Should swing, should sway right back into the picture. Yeah, you can see it in the wider cameras. It's just swaying back and forth in yep. the current. Science, this is video. Uh, do they want, I'm not quite sure what else you need from here. Uh, a little wider. Um, so, no, I, I think Scott indicated that he got what he needed here. Okay, I'm going to go just I give think, one uh, wide. Uh, the first shot there, he was able to see what the distance between the nodes Coverage. was. Yeah. I'm good, okay. pilot. Thanks, Jeff. I see the ship is uh, stopped on high pack, so thank you. Something in the fork. Oh, it's another coral being whipped around. In the background there? No, that's just the coral. That's right. Couldn't see the rest of them. They're too dark. Yeah. Oh. Which one are we going for? Trying to spare myself the embarrassment. There'll be plenty of that to come later. <laughs> so on that one. Yeah, we're far away. Uh, okay. Let me let me here show you. Yeah. So we got Paragorgia. Yeah, it looks yeah, like it's Paragorgia. Really out in the shadows. Chris, you need more of that, or is that enough? Um, yeah, I I think uh, I think that's good. Stand Thank by. You very much. So the uh, deeper Paragorgia that I'm aware of here is Paragorgia dendroides. I don't know if there are any other deeper species. Uh, there's a lot that are further up that we know only we by Paragorgia species. Just tilt down and see the base. Uh, some big planar ones. Call that. Oh, can't quite see the base. Yep. Good. Uh, don't really see it, do we? No. Uh, let's tilt back up again. Let's hold that. Full wide. A delay, so it may be too late already. Yeah, sorry, uh, you have a delay. We've sort of moved off quite a ways, I think. No problem. Right. Uh, Dave, I'm just starting to think about a plan for when we pull off bottom. Um, we've got quite a bit of layback. And, uh... Oh, look at that shot. Right. Settle me up. That looks dense. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. It looks a little denser than perhaps it does when you're further up. But. All right, so got a lot of black experts still on the line, I think. I'm full. To bring yeah, it back so to the bring it back to starboard. Else, Scott, do you have any uh, no guess stop. on this one? You move. To me, this looks like um, what we collected earlier, the heteropathies, but just with a lot more branches. Yeah, I mean the two there in front of them uh, definitely look like what we collected. This one's just branching extensively. But yeah, there's one just. And I agree, Dan. Um, what would be interesting to know um, long term is, you know, are these two species of the same genus or just under different conditions? Going partial out, see what else we see. A much more branching aspect than in um, other places, uh, depending up. on the current, the food, and so on that it's growing. By, by the way, Scott, um, Tina has weighed in on this, and if I'm reading the uh, correspondence here correctly, she thinks it's a trisopathies. 
Okay, thanks. Yeah. Is there any interest in the little guy? Uh, Tina knows her black corals better than I do, that's for certain. Watch, Lee, this is video. Is there any interest in the very little one that's yes, at the bottom the, of the screen? Yes, uh, there is interest. If we could zoom in on that one. Uh, it's over to the right now, right? Correct. Chris, if we're, we're still here after this next zoom, um, behind and to the left of the Trissa Pass. Right there, right, there, right, under, wind, right above the... Uh, that just looks a little right. bit odd, and I don't know if it's just because it's in the darkness, but it might be worth a quick zoom. Okay. Uh, you can right there, right at the laser. Right. And it just bumped. Settle. Something really weird there. Unless it's just one of these young right, tilt young down. Ones I'm partial. That's a little strange. You have to come. You have to come. Uh, Starboard yeah, some more. I think it's just a going some more. Like of the umbrella path is almost. I can't see the polish. The shadows though. Oh, thank you. Uh, you can see the branching. It's alternate branching. And then um, while the, he's still on the some um, Scott, where was that whip? Uh, you were saying uh, um, it's further up. Is that right? From here, it's uh, to the left and um, yeah, just a behind uh, the rock behind where we were looking originally at that uh, Trisha Patti's black coral. Okay. So Tina thinks this little one is heteropathies. Whoops, too much. Come There's a front up. view. If you can zoom up, there he is. See what's in the center there, whatever that is. Okay, so the, the next target is to the okay, full wide show. Going full. left. And, oh, there it is. It's next to the, shall we zoomed in on I think that's what he was talking about. Pilots, watch lead once we get a view of this yeah, last specimen, there, we'll have to pull off bottom. Black face of another rock. Okay. I think he's talking about that. The one that's behind the rock that's to the far... Can we go in partial? Partial. Almost looks like a whip or a finger pointing at the ROV camera. Are we, ah, okay, are we looking whip. at it right now? Because I'm not sure what it, which which one you're referring to. Oh, yeah, you are looking at it right now. The face is actually behind that very black face of the rock. I see what you're talking about. Oh, just we have a jellyfish or something covered. going through. I see. So this uh, really strange single single it, strand that's to the left center, it's right next to the it's on the right on the rock. That's the one he's interested yep. in. Yeah, the left hand part of the screen. The one, the one going that might, be, might be too far back, too dark to get a good view of. We, it, it is in the shadows, but we'll try. Uh, right there, Joe. Yep. If you can tilt up. Just a little more to the left, is that the Yeah, one? right there. This one right here, you right got a dead, yeah, right there, dead center now. Dead center now, exactly. Ooh, you can almost. Oh. Sorry. That's all right. It's not very stable. You're going to run out of tether in just yeah. a minute here because yeah. I've passed you. I am. Oh, I got to go. Uh, yeah. Um, and so sorry, it's just uh, about, any just about time I to pull off bottom that down, is. too. Okay. Sorry, Ross. So, I couldn't do it. Jeff. Yes, Dave. I'm all yours. From where you are, no worries. Um, due west. No.